Good morning YouTube. We're here camping at the Outer Banks in North Carolina in our 2017 A-Liner Ranger 12 and we're making this video to show you some of the little modifications we've made to make camping in this trailer more comfortable. It's my wife and I so it's just the two of us so we've made these modifications uh, with two people in mind uh, but the thought I would show you some little things we've done to the outside first and then we'll show you what we've done to the inside. So let's go around to the front of the camper and I'll show you a few little tips and tricks that have made things easier for us. First up we'll start with the door and as I mentioned we do have the wind kit um, but at the manufacturer they put the bracket for the wind kit rod right where it hits the door when you open the door. So we didn't feel like drilling out those rivets and leaving holes and re uh, repositioning that so we got a furniture mover and glued it to the door which acts as an excellent bumper to keep that from hitting. This is the storage hatch and as they come from the factory you only have the key and you have to use the key every time you wish to open and close it so if you want to get something out you don't have the keys you have to go look for them it's a real pain so I moved that over here and got a new latch that just you can open and close as you wish without the keys and then when you want to lock it you just go get the keys. I believe all of the Ranger 12s are now coming with four stabilizer jacks but in 2017 they did not they only had them in the rear so I added two in the front it was actually pretty easy to do I ordered these off of V trailer I believe and you just get up underneath with a hardened drill and drill a couple of holes in the frame for the tap bolts. Uh, they give you instructions on how to do it. Uh, it's a little bit of elbow grease involved, but uh, they're great. Really stabilize the trailer, no more rocking when you walk around in it, and I haven't had any problems with them whatsoever. Just a couple of simple things up front. Uh, here's the pin that you use to uh, put through your catch when you hook up. I just tethered it to the post here with a little chain. So you can't lose it. If you've ever lost a few of those, uh, you know, you might find that helpful. And that's just your standard barbecue gas grill gauge. A little uh, gauge you can put between your gas tank and your uh, line. It's not really that accurate, but it's better than nothing. And it lets you know if you're getting, you know, pretty low on gas. So you can go switch it out before you run out. Uh, also, we replaced the rubber line with a steel braided one. Uh, we did that after we developed a hole in this one camp out and uh, it's incredibly hard to patch those because they're under pressure so I would just suggest going and getting a steel braided line right off the bat before you have trouble with your rubber ones. I lock my tank to the trailer with a bicycle cable. Maybe that's a bit paranoid. <laughs> this really isn't a modification but it's something I use. It's just a uh, tongue lock to secure the camper when I'm away from it for quite a while and I do keep the camper in the driveway at home so I keep this on it. It's one of the better ones that I can find. I'll show a picture of it here in a minute on the uh, tongue but it's designed so you can't knock it off with a hammer. You can't get a crowbar into it to pry it off and um, this is the locking mechanism it comes from up underneath and it's hardened so it's uh, about impossible to drill out. There it is installed. A-liners don't come with any kind of a battery gauge or battery minder, at least mine didn't. So for about 10 bucks on Amazon you can buy one of these. Uh, you can see it's just really super simple to uh, wire up one wire to the positive, one wire to the negative. Uh, you can route those wires under your cover so it's all out of the weather. And you can see where I position mine under this uh, handle here so it stays out of most of the water. And we're dry cap camping right now, and I've got about three-fifths of battery. Our camper didn't come with a battery kill switch, and I've tried different things, including this uh, toggle switch here on the outside of the cover, which didn't work because it wasn't waterproof. So unless you want to wire something inside of the trailer, um, the simplest thing to do is what I've done here is just get a, a little uh, cutoff that fits on one pole and when you want to disconnect the battery you just twist it one way breaks the connection uh, when you want to re-engage it you turn it back that just keeps 
things inside the trailer like your carbon monoxide detector from constantly draining your battery. I've seen a lot of people stick these levels to the frame to kind of help you uh, know if you're level. This one would tell you if you're level front to back. You could put another one, let's say, right here perhaps or something to let you know that you're level side to side. Um, they're not really that accurate and we actually just carry a level with us in the glove compartment. Come out here and throw it on the frame to make sure we're absolutely level. This is the outdoor shower, of course. Um, when you get these, they've got a really cheesy little black plastic hose that only stretches about six feet. So unless you want to be seen taking your shower in front of your camper all the time, you might want to extend that. I was able to get a um, nice steel braided one on Amazon. And I got this brass connector that connects to female ends. Uh, you just take the shower attachment off the end of the one that it comes with. This isn't the one it came with, by the way. It's a little nicer, but it is plastic, and I do want to replace that with another steel one. Um, the ones they come with are black plastic, and they kink and split really easily. Um, but you can get this little plumbing fitting here and connect two female ends, and then I've got a steel braided one that runs all the way to the back of the camper. Sorry for the camera work. Um, and then you can put your shower head at the end here now you can stand behind your camper in your pop-up shelter or whatever it is and take a shower in a little more privacy this is the access panel to the refrigerator and uh, serves as a vent as well um, these have the cheesiest little uh, catches uh, you probably are familiar with them you have to pop them in and turn them with a screwdriver or a coin or something Oftentimes they're not easy to put in, they get bent out of shape. You may think you have it locked when you don't. I lost one going down the road one time. It was about $35 to have it replaced. Uh, so now I keep mine tethered. That's just a piece of uh, weed eater cord uh, screwed in and clamped on. But should this ever fall loose going down the road, I'll hear it and I'll be able to pull over and I won't lose it and it won't be a road hazard. Here's the waste tank that we use for our gray water. We never want to dump our gray water on the ground. And by the way, when we take a, what I call bootleg shower, we just do that with water so as not to pollute. Um, this is a seven gallon, probably about the smallest kind of overflow RV waste tank that you can get. It's about all you'd want to try to carry uh, to the toilet or the dump station. Uh, we just uh, take ours to uh, the toilet, and carefully pour it in. I keep sanitizer in it so it's real clean and, and easy to do. But you do have to modify a little hose to hook it up. Uh, A-Liner gives you a, a non-standard drain outlet. Uh, you can buy these, uh, basically they're caps with a little elbow hose. Um, that's going to be a, a male end on that and you have a male end on your tank so you need to fashion a little short length of hose with two female ends which is easy to do. Uh, works real well. Well here are all the states that we've had Arlene in. Uh, I think we've been out about 250 nights in or so. I think we know what we're doing and we do have a lot of changes we've made inside. I'm going to clean up the camper when we get home and I'll show you those because we're getting ready to do a reconfiguration of the inside to allow it to have twin beds and when I do that going to lose a lot of the little things that we've done uh, to the standard configuration. So I want to so show you those and then stay tuned because when we get through doing the remodel, we'll show you that as well. Thanks for watching.